What brought me to, to making jewelry um, goes back to eighth grade when I started wrapping crystals with silver wire and all I had was a box with my pliers and my beads and my wire and stones and I did that in macrame and sold them at concerts and that graduated into doing hemp jewelry and then eventually I w wanted to go to school for something. I'm like, what do I go to school for? And my friend said, jewelry. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it was the obvious thing to do because I loved doing it and I did it every day. So I went into school for jewelry, started at Vancouver Community College in Vancouver, of course. And um, after going to a few night courses there, I realized I wanted to continue and I moved to the Coonies and started at KSA. Jewelry is not the easiest sell. Like it's, uh, it's, it's a luxury item for for some. For some others, it's, it's, it's an addiction <laughs> for me. <laughs> um, I like beauty, and I, I like to adorn myself in beautiful things. And that's how it all started, really. My favorite thing to do is um, pattern work. Um, which doesn't really come into my commission work as much because it's mostly wedding rings. Um, but in the copper pieces, the copper and silver pieces, uh, it's all patterned. And then I like, add, like taking a pattern piece and then having different variables, using it in different ways and in different objects. So a lot, a lot of my, my inspiration does go along with color and texture. If I'm making, if I'm doing designs that are not for a client, it's usually something that pops into my head. It's something that the outside world has inspired me and I literally just get a flash of an idea because I think my brain thinks in jewelry 24 seven. And so I honestly get flashes from everything I look at for, of, for things that I could do in the jewelry world from it. It starts off as a slate color, and what I'm going to be doing is oxidizing the surface with electricity. Different volts give you different colors. I've got a larger circle silver dome, and after this is anodized, we're going to set it in there like that and have a beautiful pendant. So we have an anode and a cathode. This is an actual piece of niobium, and once we turn the electricity on, um, what actually happens is this fizzes up and this draws all the little tiny molecules onto the surface of this one. And different voltage gives you different colors and what it is is just multi-layers, more layers of, of oxidization being attached to the niobium. I'll do 140 and go for a green. And you can see the bubbles coming off the the main piece of niobium, and already you can see the colors changing. Now, right now, it's a blue, and now it's a yellow, and then we go into a nice, beautiful fuchsia pink, and then into a purple. Oh, there's a purple blue. We're gonna go up to a green. We're getting into the greens now. And there we go. We've got our first layer of oxidization done. So I'm gonna dry this off, turn this off. And now because there's a texture on it, you have high points and low points. And I'm gonna take my sanding stick and basically just sand off the high points. And as you can see, I'm just getting the top texture and the bottom layer is staying green. So after we do this, we're gonna go back in at a lower voltage. 
so the green doesn't change. And add another color. Okay, now that we've got the slate colored back, or the nat natural Niobium color, we'll go back in and add our second color. There you go. What's next for Penny K Designs? Well, I would like to do an apprenticeship. Um, I'd like to take more courses. There's a few courses down in San Francisco. Um, maybe start learning how to work with platinum. I really wanted to work with platinum. Um, and yeah, travel a bit more. See what's going on in the rest of the world, in the world of jewelry.